Finally, we've just about reached the point where we're going to join some access points to the zone director. But before we do that, let's go here to configure access points and scroll down to access point policies. And there's two things that we need to look at before we get the access points to join the controller. The first one is whether we are going to automatically approve all join requests from the access points. If this is ticked, when the access points reach out to the controller with their discovery, then the controller will automatically approve the access point and start the configuration by downloading the firmware. If this is unticked, then the access points will be in a wait state, which means they've contacted the controller, but they won't join the controller until you manually go in and approve them. And I'll show you that process later on. So we need to untick this just so that we've got a little bit more control over the joining process. The second thing I want to look at is here, the tunnel MTU. If the access point to join the controller over a WAN, then the latency within the connection can cause problems. So we should reduce this tunnel MTU uh, down to something like 1300. So I'm going to put that in here. And there we go. Changes have been saved. So that's just two things that we need to look at before we join the access points to the controller. So if you're ready, let's go through the entire joining process now. We'll begin then here at the zone director. We can also see in the dashboard that we have no access points registered and the map is completely blank and that's what we should expect. Here under monitor access points we don't see any currently managed devices and again that's what we should expect. So let's see what happens in each of these windows when we start to join the access point to the controller. So we'll bring the access point on in the bottom window and we see immediately the power light goes on. And we ran through this process in an earlier module, but let's look at what's happening up on the screen. So the power light is still red and that lasts for about 20 seconds as we've seen previously. Now the power light is flashing green. And if we refresh on the map view, we still don't see any access points. Now the power light is steady, which means that the access point has got its IP address, but it doesn't know where to find a zone director. But it's on a local subnet, so that local LWAP discovery should be able to find the zone director. The access point is now shown up on the dashboard. We can see here AP1 it says disconnected because it's not actually gone through registration yet. Here, if we refresh the configure access points view, we should see the MAC address here of the access point. And it's not approved, and this is because of the access point approval policy. Under monitor access points, we can again see the access point itself, but it's approval pending. So we need to approve this for it to go in. There are a couple of ways that we can approve an access point. If we scroll over here to the right, we'll see under action a couple of icons. One of them is a green tick, and if we click that green tick, then the access point will be approved. Now, we will come back to this section because there are some more icons that appear here once the access point has been approved, so we'll discuss those later on. But instead, let's go back to configure access points. And under configure access points, we have the option to tick the access point and select allow. So that's the method we'll use to approve the access points in this case. So let's go here to configure access points. Let's tick and allow. Let's see what happens next. Well, immediately the status goes to approved. On the dashboard, still the same, this one access point. And if we look at the access point information, we'll see the status as upgrading firmware. We can see the controller light flashing. And at this point, the access point is upgrading the firmware in its first bank. About 1 minute 30 in, the access point now has the firmware in one of its banks and reboots using that firmware. About 2.5 minutes in now, and the access point is downloading its configuration. The CTL light is flashing, which shows configuration update, and that eventually goes steady green. And when it does, that means the access point is powered up and it's ready and operational. Now on the dashboard, we can see that the access point health is going to one green, which shows a connected access point. If we go to monitor access points, we can see again the access point details, status connected, it has an IP address, and it gives us some information about the access point itself. Let's do a CLI login to check the access point. Now it won't be the super SP admin because now this access point has joined the zone director. So we need to use the login details. 
of the zone director. And here we immediately get information that the access point is zone director manage mode. Issue the command get director, which we looked at before. The most recent zone director AP is under a zone director 192.168.1.201. So we know that the access point is managed. Currently the access point is in a state of run. Currently AP is in state run means that the access point is connected to the controller and it's good, it's up and running and it's ready. One other thing to look at that you may find interesting is to issue the command firmware show all. The command firmware show all shows us the firmware that's in the banks of the access point and we can see in the uh, first bank image one the code is 10. If we scroll down we'll see in image 2, so that's bank 2, is code 104. So even though we're operational on code 10 we still have 104 in the second bank. But that's fine, the access point works off the primary bank, so 104 will be changed if there's any subsequent upgrades to the access point. If you're used to working with Smart Zone, this is slightly different. On Smart Zone controllers, firmware is upgraded in both banks. So don't be surprised if you see this. Well, that brings us to the end of registering the access points to the Zone Director. In future modules, we look at monitoring access points and advanced access point configuration.